end of the day, it, it kind of turns into this process. You wind up digging deeper into yourself than you really thought you would. And out comes your flaws and out comes your imperfections, and out comes, you know, your shortcomings and your, your moments of crises. And that winds up in the film in a way that audiences connect and say, oh, my gosh, I've been there, too. What hope is there? What hope is there for me? You know, what hope have you found in your life? That's when the door is kind of open for us to really kind of start, you know, engaging with our audience and speaking to them. Mid-South Viewpoint, a Christian news and information feature of Bot Radio Network 640 AM, discussing the news, views, issues, and concerns that affect our community. Join us now for today's edition of Mid-South Viewpoint. At the end of the 1930s, America dominated the production of sci-fi movies. 1936, Flash Gordon was released with Buck Rogers to follow in 1939. The first documented sci-fi was created in 1895 by the Lemire brothers of France. I might not be pronouncing their name, but that's my French, okay? Now, their movie, The Mechanical Butcher, was about a machine that automatically turns a live pig into various pork products. Sci-fi film is usually associated with time travel, alien invasion, disaster films, robots, mind and identity, and monster films. Now, today we travel to a new dimension where sci-fi has yet to be utilized to its fullest potential. Put on your decoder listening device and climb aboard the MSVP craft as we venture unexplored galaxies with our guest, Captain Kylie Butler and his creative commandos. <laughs> well, Welcome to Mid-South Viewpoint. Hi, I'm Byron Tyler. Glad to have you along here. Kylie Butler, it's good to see you. That was an introduction, Byron. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I was thinking about this program when you called me last week and told me about this idea you had. First of all, I am not a sci-fi film lover. You probably wouldn't see me going to most sci-fi films. But when Kylie Butler tells me he's involved with something designed to be a tool to reach young people and whoever else that God decides to be part of this, I said, I'm in. I want to find out about it. I'm excited <laughs> about it. Anyway, uh, first of all, Kylie Butler, you're a frequent guest on our program here, and your wife, Rachel, who's in the studio off microphone right now, are the directors of Area 1 Ministries, and you have been for a number of years. We've had you on. Matter of fact, recently we talked about youth camps, parents getting their kids ready to go to camp, and I think you're pretty much full, aren't you? Well, we're almost, almost full. Uh, we're really excited. We can't believe that there's been this kind of response. We've been doing Area 1 for over a decade now. Specifically, tell us what Area One does. Well, primarily, we are a support organization to the local church. We create camps and conferences for church youth groups. And the idea is, is that we take all of the event planning, all the equipment and the technicians and all the crazy stuff that it takes to pull off an event. And we take on that responsibility so that youth pastors and the adult volunteers with youth programs can do the one thing that's most important, and that is spend time ministering to their kids. That's our heart, is to support the church. We love doing it. I have always been ignited when I get around you and Rachel because of your excitement, first of all, for Jesus and the passion that you have for ministry, the way that you do ministry. You try to reach, again, the hearts of young people, which ultimately sometimes reaches their parents and their families, which is a great way of doing ministry. Quite often, yes. The gospel is never in a vacuum. And when you reach the life of a kid, many times it turns around the entire family over a period of time. That's kind of why we're here today. We have a new, exciting, unique opportunity to reach kids, but not just to reach kids. This is a unique tool that is going to reach, we believe, around the world. And Christians have an opportunity to be a part of it. And that's the exciting thing. Well, Kyle, you have formed a, a partnership with a longtime friend, Dan Baker, his company called Timid Monster. I love the name of that. Dan Baker is here with us today. Dan, I went to your website and I saw this little Timid Monster there. I was trying to find the history about it. So mm -hmm. why don't you tell us about your organization? We started probably early 2011. We are a bunch of filmmakers. We collaborate. We kind of work loosely with each other. We, you know, help each other with each other's projects. Focus primarily on science fiction, fantasy films. We go to science fiction and fantasy conventions, hang out there, meet the people, build relationships, talk to them. Just 
lot of really cool stuff like that. Do you wear those kind of interesting costumes when you go to the store? <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we want to, we really do, but we're broke and we can't afford them. But, I mean, some of these people, some of these people are wearing the professional studio movie theater quality costumes. You'd be surprised. It's great. Take us back to your first interest in filmmaking. I started probably in 2005, and it's as simple as saying just God told me to do it. I was trying to, I came out here in Memphis to do music and wasn't really getting anywhere with that because I was, you know, very focused on being a rock star. And God said, nope, I've got something else for you to do. And I kind of resisted it for a while. But yeah, it's been one of those things that the more I get into it, the more it's film and storytelling, all that stuff is something that you kind of wrestle with. It's not something that you, oh, I'm going to write a story that I'm going to turn into a movie. There's a really great quote by Flannery O'Connor. She says, the Christian doesn't decide what would be good for the world world and then proceed to deliver it. Like a doubtful Jacob, he looks at what stands in his path and wonders if he'll come out of, you know, wrestling with God alive kind of thing. And that's really been our experience. It's been something that we we wrestle with and we learn and we grow and we share our experiences and we share relationships that we build with people in the process. Now you have a team of folks that work with you at Timid Monster mm -hmm. and one's in the studio with us right now, Rachel Taylor. Rachel, how are you doing? Great, how are you? Tell me what you do. Well, I'm a writer and director as well and I have recently written and directed a short film called Avarice, which is just released this year. So what does it take to make a movie? <laughs> <laughs> it takes your life. That's what it takes. <laughs> um, it takes money. It takes inspiration and a lot of dedication. When you have the idea to make a movie, you have to be willing to do anything possible to get that thing all the way to completion. Kylie, the project we're talking about today is called Aurora Centauri. What is it all about? It's a fascinating story that's inspired by the writings of C.S. Lewis and probably the more of a modern storytelling. But the idea is it's the story of a young girl who is learning to be selfless in life. And this story goes along with what we're teaching at Area One this year. In fact, that's kind of how we got started with Dan and Rachel. We were going to just do some regular small videos. And then Dan and Rachel had this idea to do something much bigger, not only to reach the kids at Area One conferences, but to also reach people all around the world at comic and fantasy conventions, as well as to be a tool for the local church. And so we're telling a story, the journey of a young girl. Tell you what, you know, Dan, <laughs> you're better telling this story. Am I now? <laughs> <laughs> um, so you've got Aurora Centauri, her and her people. They have migrated out of the safety of a remote solar system. They want to set up their own lives. They want to be free. And now years have passed and there's a radiation barrier separating them from safety. And the only way across is a blind leap through. So she's a courier. She travels between these little asteroid communities and nobody really wants to talk to each other. And they've all kind of grown further and further and further apart. In the middle of all this, this big intergalactic dust cloud is blowing in and it's going to force them kind of into eternal lockdown, eternal darkness. And in the middle of all that, she gets a call to take a a type of call that few couriers of her type take, and that's to transport human cargo. And it turns out it's a couple little girls that wind up needing her help kind of at the end of the world. It's got a great storyline. And it's Rachel, good. your part in making this film happen. I'm a producer on Aurora Centauri. So um, right now, my main role is just trying to get the film off the ground. So right now we need the finances for it and the fans and just all that stuff. What you said takes me to my next area I want to talk about. This is a ground floor mission. We're talking about something that's just trying to give it wings and get it going. So really, Kylie, that's why we're here today. That's exactly why we're here, is we're looking for support to build this project because it is unique. It's an opportunity to reach kids. It's an opportunity to provide churches with amazing curriculum and a fantastic film that will influence generations to come. It's an opportunity to reach people in the comic and fantasy convention, which right now, I don't know of any church that's reaching that crowd right now. This is a really unique project, and we need help. We need help getting this thing off the ground. We're not just asking for money here. We have a Kickstarter campaign set up, and this isn't like, come donate to our cool ministry. It's going to be awesome for everybody. You can actually pre-purchase a copy of the film. You can pre-purchase a copy of the ministry tools that we're developing to go along with it. This is just something that you can take part in and share and enjoy yourself. 
How do you, uh, and we've talked about this on other programs in the past, you know, we're not trying to razzmatazz kids. Right. That doesn't mean that we can't be exciting. It doesn't mean it can't be uh, adventuresome. There's a tool here we're talking about drawing young people where they're at into thinking about spiritual things, thinking about themselves in relation to God. It goes back to what I was saying, too, about how we kind of operate at Timid Monster. We draw people in by what we do. A fandom is this amazing kind of cultural phenomenon you see at these science fiction fantasy conventions where people just they get into orbit around kind of these ideas and these shows and these concepts and we're there we're talking to people we're getting them engaged and bringing them kind of into our lives and into into the struggles that we're having and out of that comes these really strong meaningful relationships where we do have an opportunity to you know if not encourage somebody to actually share the gospel too Dan, when you go to these conventions, what are some of the unique things or maybe some of the common denominators that many of these people have that you meet? I can tell you that this is almost a missions field created by the church in a lot of respects. These are people that have been chased out of families, chased out of homes, and chased out of communities because they are they're a little different. They are different, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. I didn't have a lot of friends growing up in high school and in my adult life, apparently, but... <laughs> Um, we're all kind of on the outside there, and we've kind of formed our own community out there in the outer reaches of space. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And Kylie, was this your original concept that you and Rachel, were you talking about it one day and said, why don't we make a sci-fi movie? Well, we've always wanted to do something that's much bigger than just creating some short videos for the Area 1 camps and conferences. We've always wanted to do something much bigger than that. We believe that we can be much more effective at ministering the gospel with sharing Jesus Christ if we work together with incredibly talented people. And so I probably have to say, I think, Dan, this was your idea. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, we sat down and we started collaborating and, you know, you can accomplish such amazing things by working together. We don't want to be out in, in our own little outer orbit, our own little bubble, doing our thing that's not connected to anybody else. We want to reach kids, yes, but we want to reach people wherever they are, especially groups of people that maybe the church has overlooked. And this is an opportunity to do something amazing, uh, really extraordinary. You mentioned a moment ago about a curriculum that would go along with the film. Yes, absolutely. I, I don't have any statistics in front of me, but I've read for years that one of the most influential mediums in the world uh, is film. It drives our culture. It drives our values. And I think the church is beginning to understand this. I mean, you're starting to see a lot of faith-based films. And what we're trying to do is a little bit different, um, especially if you're not into spaceships and explosions and things like that. I get it. You don't have to be into that genre of film to understand how powerful of a tool this can be. And so what we're creating is going to be a, a film that will be broken up into sections. So a youth pastor can take this film, and there will be a discussion guide and curriculum that goes with it. And he'll be able to talk to his kids about biblical concepts in a way that these kids have probably never seen before in an influential medium that will have these kids on the edge of their seat. Rachel, is this going to be an animated type film or? No, it's all live action. There's going to be quite a few special effects, obviously, blowing things up. We're not actually going to be able to do. <laughs> but um, Oh, yeah, come on, be... let's blow something up. <laughs> we would like to, but <laughs> no. Um, yeah, no, it's going to be live action. This is pretty exciting, Dan. I've seen some of the short films that you've already been involved with mm -hmm. and, and have won awards, too. So uh, you're playing with a uh, award-winning movie maker here. I tell you, we have an amazing team of professionals, and I cannot wait for this project to be made because it is truly unique. And there's such an opportunity for people listening to get involved and be a part of this project. Now, what is the projected start time? How long will it take to make this film, Dan? This is going to be a doozy. We are hopefully going to start production mid-April. Kylie's camps are in June. We're going to be able to use this film to minister at his camps. So uh, we've got our work cut out for us, but we're going to start pre-production pretty much any day now. We'll have May to turn around the post-production, get all the effects in place, do the editing and all that stuff, and hopefully be done by June. What about casting? 
Well, that's the pros <laughs> over here. <laughs> we're, you know, we already started. We we fortunately have a very, very good relationship with a lot of casting agencies here in the Mid-South, and there actually is a lot of talent here in the Mid-South that we're very proud to be working with. We're hopefully going to be pulling in a lot of the people that we've worked with before. We've got a young lady that was in one of our other films that hopefully we'll be bringing back. So if somebody listening right now, Dan, says, mm-hmm. hey, you know, I'm interested, you know, I have some acting ability that should not go unnoticed, might want to try out for a part. Is there opportunity? Yeah, there most definitely is. Uh, the best way would be to get in contact with us through our website, which is timidmonster.com. Just go there and leave a message and we'll get back to you. When you take a concept like this film project from its beginning, as a film producer, what are some things that you're looking to do, the steps involved to make it? It's it's blood, sweat, and tears. You really do have to... There's this funny thing that writers keep talking about, like the characters in their heads come alive and start talking to each other and they start telling the writer what should be happening in the story. And that's kind of what happens. You kind of got to step back and let the story breathe and let it kind of grow on its own. And, you know, there's a lot of prayer that goes into it. There's a lot of thought. There's a lot of research. There's a lot of reading. But at the end of the day, it, it kind of turns into this process. You wind up digging deeper into yourself than you really thought you would. And out comes your flaws and out comes your imperfections and out comes, you know, your shortcomings and your, your moments of crises. And that winds up in the film in a way that audiences connect and say, oh, my gosh, I've been there, too. What hope is there? What hope is there for me? You know, what hope have you found in your life? That's when the door is kind of open for us to really kind of start, you know, engaging with our audience and speaking to them. You know, that's such a needed thing, Kylie, in today's world. You know, where is hope? Is there hope? Largely, these conventions that you go to, there are people there that are looking looking for hope, Mm -hmm. trying to find hope, Rachel. How did you first find hope in your life? Um, through story. Um, I, I think the reason why I ended up doing, you know, becoming a filmmaker is because I, I try and make sense of the world through stories. And I think that you can find, um, you can make connections from start to beginning in a story. So I think, I mean, at a young age is kind of where I started seeing that in like just different movies, you know, the, the ones where like the small people win, you know, they end up getting these like huge, you know, tasks in life and they ended up conquering them. And that's through that is where I found hope. Kylie, how do you produce something that's not cheesy when it comes to making these kind of films? Because in the early days, probably in the 50s and 60s, we look back at some of those uh, films that were made, you know, we're going, oh, my goodness, I can't believe that we were entertained by this. Uh, You know, even when I watch the episodes now uh, of Lost in Space. Oh, wow. uh, And I I grew up watching those. I was always mesmerized by the robot and, you know, and their adventures in space. And now I watch it and I with my kids, I'm going, I can't believe I used to watch this, you know. (laughs) <laughs> well, I, I tell you, it really comes down to the story. Um, we're not relying on, as we mentioned a second ago, explosions and flashy stuff and, and even CGI, computer-generated special effects. You know, That's going to be part of the story. But really, the story is about this girl and what she's going through in her journey. And we find that a lot of times the best art is when you're actually telling a story and you're not trying to just do explosions for explosion's sake. I know for some folks out there, what we're talking about may sound like a cheesy Godzilla movie. That's not at all what we're going for. You look back a couple generations ago, I'm inspired by C.S. Lewis. I grew up with The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe and all of those amazing stories and, and Tolkien and Lord of the Rings. And there are a lot of stories that they're set in another world. Many of those stories, they still stand the test of time because they were written so well. The stories about the characters were so deep. And, and that's what we're trying to create. We're trying to create something that's it's not going to be here today and gone tomorrow. It's a story that will be able to be told for many, many years to come because it's that deep and because the hope centers around Jesus Christ. You know, and that is the, the ultimate story that has stood the test of time that God stepped into our world through his son, Jesus, and radically changed lives through that faith relationship in him, that journey that we start when we put our trust in him. And and the parallels here, I mean, I think it's so important, again, because that message oftentimes, uh, if there can be things that they can relate to, such as this sci-fi movie. Absolutely. That points them to the truth and points them to that relationship. Again, this is the ground floor opportunity for our listeners right now. And I think the first thing would be to say prayers are needed. Yes, 
please. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's going to take a large group of folks pulling this off. And we have an amazing team. Dan, you're one of the best filmmakers I've ever seen. He's an up and comer. Rachel is awesome at what she does. The script writer that we have working with us is phenomenal. But absolutely, at the end of the day, we have to have a group of folks praying for us. It's going to be the Lord that pulls this off. It's a crazy idea. And we felt like God said, go for it. And we are going for it. And we're looking for some crazy Christians to join us in this. And that's what it takes sometimes, taking that leap of faith, believing, trusting God. Here's this vehicle here that can be used again to do that. And so we would encourage our listeners, first of all, to learn more. There's a video that you can go online and look at, Dan, isn't there? Mm -hmm. There is. uh, If you go to whoisaurora.com, that will take you straight to our campaign page. We might put some additional information up there. But whoisaurora.com will take you to everything that you need to see. There's There's a video and you can see Kylie and I flapping our gums in person. (laughs) And not just over the radio waves. But yeah, everything's there. Yeah, and let me spell that out for you, listeners. It's uh, A-U-R-O-R-A, Aurora. So whoisaurora.com. You can go to the website, see the short video clip, and learn more about this film and opportunities for you to connect. That's why we want you to know about it. There is a level of integrity that when it comes to Kylie and Rachel Butler, when it comes to their ministry and their hearts, I mean, they have proven this since I've known them. I first met them before they got married when they were at Crichton College at a missions conference. God united their hearts with vision and ministry. We've talked to them about their testimony, about Rachel's going through cancer and God healing her from her cancer and the things that they have journeyed together in life by trusting Christ through the Area One camps uh, and other ways that they have sought to reach our young people, young people right here in our community, which through this project, again, Aurora Centauri, that they're going to be able not only to reach our youth here, but youth we will trust around the world. This is going to be an amazing tool that will reach people around the world for many years to come. Dan, what would be the link to the movie? Do you know yet? Uh, you know, I don't think we've gotten quite that far. We'll probably keep whoisaurora.com around. You can check out the film side of things at timidmonster.com. And if you want to check out the ministry side of things, you can go to Kylie's site, which is area1.org. Yes, area1.org. So you got two resources there to check out, to learn more, and be in prayer for. Rachel, as the producer, tell me, what does a producer do? Um, well, basically, a producer makes sure that the money is all there for everything that you need. You make sure you've got your crew, your um, the cast is in order, and uh, things are running smoothly. So there's a lot of prep work that goes along with it. On set, there's not quite as much to do, but um, it's mostly all the stuff before. They do a lot of logistics. What about the actual uh, technology of filmmaking now, Dan, has gotten so... It's incredible. Yeah. I mean, what you have available to you, I mean, will you be using the latest or the best? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We want to make a tool that is going to be able to compete. I mean, the thing you got to understand is people are having conversations about faith, about morality, about God, but that's getting filtered through shows like Doctor Who and, you know, Star Trek and all that stuff. And we want to be a part of that conversation too. The church really has zero presence in that area right now. And it's heartbreaking. It's absolutely heartbreaking, and we need to be part of that conversation. So we want to make sure that we have the right tools to kind of jump in and say, hey, this is what we feel. This is what we believe, too. So we're going to pull in, you know, we're probably going to shoot on the red camera, which uh, it's amazing what these digital cameras do nowadays. They can almost totally mimic the quality and the aesthetic beauty of film uh, for just pennies, almost pennies comparative to I mean, this project would have been impossible maybe 10 years ago. Absolutely impossible. The church would have no hope at pulling off something like this. You know, I was just thinking too, Kylie, what the Apostle Paul said, you know, I become all things to all men that I might win some, you know? Exactly. And using the tools and resources to be able to accomplish that, like this project. Absolutely. The things that we can pull off today, uh, as Dan just said, are phenomenal. And so we just have to have people who are willing to go do it. And I tell you what, Byron, we have a team that is willing to go do it right now. And we want to talk with more production staff and those behind the scenes of making this film possible, but we can't do it right now because our time has run out. So what we're going to do is we're going to close out this program, say goodbye, and come back on our next broadcast as we soar the intergalactic galaxies of the (laughs) sci-fi film here with our guests. Thank you so much, Dan Baker, Rachel Taylor, Kylie Butler, 
for what you're doing for Christ's kingdom. I'm excited to learn more about this project and how our listeners can be involved. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Awesome. Right. We'll talk to you next time. Friends, on that, we'll say goodbye on this edition of Mid-South Viewpoint. I'm Byron Tyler. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye now. Thanks for listening to Mid-South Viewpoint. If you'd like to join the conversation, you can email us. Our address is wcrv at botradionetwork.com. This has been Mid-South Viewpoint, another Christian news and information feature from Bot Radio Network 640 AM.